Hey folks, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge and we've got another Puma fixed blade for you today, an outdoors knife. A very basic, general, hunting, outdoors style knife. Comes in a very nice chocolate brown leather sheath and that's one thing Puma does better than a lot of other companies in this price range is they make some very good leather sheaths and this one's put together very well, great stitching. Uh, nice uh, buffing of the leather because this is the inside uh, sort of suede edge here that gets folded over and uh, that's done very well and just a very good little sheath. And here's the knife, uh, the Alicente, hopefully I'm saying that right, I'm probably saying it wrong, olive, olive wood handles. What we've got is a uh, clip point that comes down just a gentle, sort of like a drop point, clip point kind of thing, hollow grind. Uh, 1.4116 stainless steel. That's a German stainless steel that has been used for a long time as the primary steel for kitchen knives uh, because it's got a very high corrosion resistance and yet it's a good stainless steel that cuts really well, uh, takes a good edge, keeps a good edge. It's, you know, it's on that borderline between, it's at the top end of the budget range trying to bump up into the mid-range kind of types of steels. So it's a good steel. We've got jimping on the back here, and that's your basic knife. So let's put this thing on the tabletop, and we're going to take a good close look at this knife by Puma Knives, made in Spain, handcrafted. So stay tuned. It's coming at you right now. First off, you'll notice, hey, there's a sticker on the blade. And that's because Puma knives, every single one of their handcrafted knives are tested. So it says Rockwell tested, uh, geprüft, tested, uh, controle, or that's probably Spanish, controle, I don't know how to say it in Spanish. So it's a control test. It's a test to see if the Rockwell is exactly what they say it is. And 4116 has a Rockwell of around 56 plus or minus. And this knife certainly was heat treated properly or it wouldn't have passed that test. Um, I'm leaving that sticker on there because I'm returning this knife to uh, Puma Knives, uh, the distributor in uh, the Ottawa Valley, uh, north of Ottawa. There is a Puma Knives distributor for Canada. Close-ups of this beautiful looking sheath. It's just high grade not the super highest grade leather, of course, but it's a good high grade leather and uh, good workmanship, nice handcraft in putting this leather together. And, uh, you know, it will, whoa. I knocked the camera just to fly in there. And, you know, it'll hang on a belt right about there. Actually, I'll zoom the camera out a little bit if I can. I got to manually move it here. Okay, here's a bit wider of an angle. Maybe I'll put it on an angle like this so you can see the whole thing. So, yeah, the belt goes through here, and uh, your standard belts will fit through there no problem at all. And so it's going to hang on your waist. It, it, it hangs away from your body, and it's not high on your hip. I hate the knives, you know, with that you know, have their clip right here on it. And so then they sit like that way up on your waist here, you know, and your belly button's lower than the handle of the knife. I'm not too fond of that. This kind of uh, sheath I like very, very much in the way that it hangs on you know, a pocket like that. So that's really, really good. So we've got a knife that feels good in the hand because olive wood always feels quite nice. If I was keeping this one for myself, I would round off these corners a little bit more. You know, they are rounded a bit, but I'd round it off even more to give it a really nice round. I'd still leave flat, you know, about the width of these pins, these steel pins. Uh, the width of them, I'd leave flat on the sides. It's always good to have some flat to help you uh, always know exactly which way the blade is without having to see it. So you know exactly what angle it's on. So it's good to have flat sides, but I'd round it off just a bit more. Of course, it's full tang. The steel comes all the way around. Uh, nice jimping here. You know, we've got four, two, three, four, five little 
jimps cut out there. <laughs> jimps. It's very good for your thumb. Uh, my thumb sits in there and it doesn't get extra hot, but it gives me a much better purchase on the knife. That's really good. Pinch grip works very well. If you're skinning an animal and you want that pinch grip and you're doing that, or if you're working on the tip, that works very well because you've got a nice wide blade here for your finger on it. Reverse grip, my hand fills that up very well. Uh, my hands are large, bordering on extra large. If I put my hand right at the end, you know, you can see a little bit larger of a hand can still be comfortable in here. And of course, smaller hands can be comfortable as well. It's a nice hollow grind. You've got a little bit of a space here. It's not really a finger choil, but you can put the tip of your finger up to your first knuckle. You know, if you wanted to, you know, hold the knife this way for some kind of controlled cutting. So that works. Uh, I would have preferred if they would have just taken the grind and brought it back another, you know, three eighths of an inch right close to the end of the handle there so that it'd be sharp a little bit longer because uh, I don't tend to use these unless it's a full finger choil, but some people do, some people don't. And talking about this part of the knife, uh, the one con that I have for this knife is I really wish it had a sharpener's choil. I really like those, but it's got a nice squared off plunge. So it's able to be sharpened right to the edge very well. And, um, you know, it's got a nice sharp edge on it right now. Let's get a piece of paper. Here's my notes, so I better not cut them all up, but. There we go. I've used it a bit, so the start of the cut doesn't want to necessarily cut each time on a shallow angle. Closer to the tip, it's a bit better now. I have used this a bit to, uh, you know, test it, and uh, yeah, it just needs, and it cuts straight in, it just needs a little bit of TLC, nice sharp blade, and it, you know, every knife needs TLC every once in a while, and uh, this just needs a little bit of a tune-up, and uh, since I'm sending it back, I'm not going to be giving it a complete tune-up, uh, I'll tune up that edge just a little bit because I have used it a bit. And I want it to be in uh, good enough condition so that uh, maybe if he can't resell it, you know, at least it could be used for something profitable for his business. Uh, the guy who runs this business is a, uh, he's doing this business on the side and, uh, you know, because he's a knife enthusiast and uh, he's got a cabinet making shop where he does uh, some high end cabinet making and the like. And so he's a, you know, a regular guy who really knows wood and he knows cutting tools because he's using them all the time. And, um, you know, this Puma knife is quite nice. Let's go over the details of it. Uh, like I said, I'm calling it a drop point blade with a hollow grind and it has a cutting edge of nine centimeters. That's about 3.54 inches. Uh, the blade length, so to the wood, from the tip, 9.88 centimeters, 3.89 inches. Uh, the blade thickness is 3.15 millimeters, that's 0.124 inches. The blade depth right here is 2.69 centimeters, that's just over an inch. Uh, the thickness of the edge behind the grind, you'll be amazed, 0.35 millimeters, I was amazed. Usually a knife like this is about half a millimeter thick, this is 0.35, so quite a bit thinner. That's 0 0.0135 inches. But uh, in the cutting that I did, it's not damaged yet. Uh, it's too small of a knife to be really using for batoning or anything. Uh, but you could uh, use it if you're batoning, like um, kindling for you know starting a fire and stuff, something small. It'll do that, no problem at all. Um, the grind angle... Uh, the grind angle on the one side is 19.3 degrees, and the grind angle on the other side is 17.1 degrees. So that's got a sharper angle than most uh, knives of this style do. Most knives have a more blunt angle, 22, 23 degrees per side. So 19 and 17, you know, it's a nice sharp angle. And uh, when it's tuned up really nice, you know, if I strop this, I bet you it would start sliding through that paper like nobody's business. But that's, that's decent. Um, if I was to sharpen this up by myself, if they like that kind of angle, I'd probably put it at about 18 and a half degrees per side. 
sort of going halfway between the 19 and the 17. Uh, well, 19.3 and 17.1. So 18 and a half degrees, I think, would be a good compromise for the sharpness on here. You know, maybe all the way up to 20, like a lot of knives of this type would be. Let's talk about the handle some more. Handle length, 10.9 centimeters, 4.28 inches. The handle thickness is 1.2 centimeters. That's three quarters of an inch. And that's why I would sand it off a little bit rounder, just to make it feel a little bit smaller in the hand but not bad at all. Uh, you can't make a handle thicker. Well, you could by wrapping up, you know, putting like a, a, a tennis racket wrap on there or all kinds of tapes that you can put on, athletic tapes. Uh, but if you make something smaller, you have to add materials. So it's good to have it a good thickness. If you want to make it thinner, you can do that yourself. But, you know, three quarters of an inch for this type of knife, I think is awesome. Uh, the handle depth, that's this way from uh, the spine to the belly right here is the biggest it's just a bit smaller on the tail than it is right there 2.54 centimeters that's exactly an inch was that planned i probably think so uh, the grip area so between my two thumbs right there is 9.1 centimeters 3.58 inches the total length of this knife from tip to the end of the handle is 20.75 centimeters 8.17 inches uh, the weight of this knife is 138 grams, 4.85 ounces, and you add in the sheath, and it is 192 grams, 6.75 ounces. So six and three quarter ounces to carry this entire thing. That's good. That's very good. Uh, the price for their knives at uh, the Canadian website where you can get this is $83.99 Canadian. That equals right around $65 US, a little bit less than $65 US. Um, so there you go. If you live in other parts of the world, you're, you can find your own place to get this. But for North America, it's about 84 Canadian or about 64 US. Not bad at all. Fit and finish is good. I really like the handle scales that they chose for this. You know, you got some knots in there. You got some grain going around different ways. That's really nice. There's a knot on this side. and There was a small branch coming through right there. Very, very nice. I like natural wood. By the way, to take care of this, just use some natural oils. Uh, you, can, you can use food grade mineral oil, you know, the kind that you take to lubricate your intestines to keep your system moving. Uh, not the mineral oil that you buy at the hardware store. That's something else. Uh, so the pharmaceutical, you know, at the pharmacy, you can buy mineral oil, that kind of stuff, or simple coconut oil, uh, vegetable oil, olive oil, if you want to. Almost any kind of oil, especially if you're going to use this knife as a hunting knife, a food grade, uh, food type oils would be great. Coconut oils, you know, and all kinds of, you know, even tongue tree oil, Lots of different ways to keep this good or just use a wax like a beeswax That's really really good. You warm up some beeswax and you just rub it in and that helps You know give it a really good waterproofness to it. Olive wood is highly water resistant already But you do have to keep watching it. You don't want standing water on your handle uh, Don't wash this in your dishwasher hand wash your knives <laughs> um, So special features well, not really. It's a general all-purpose kind of outdoorsman's knife, and it does that very well. The pros, it can do skinning. It's got good fit and finish, uh, very thin behind the grind, and it will stay that way for years because it's a hollow grind, so you can sharpen it many times before it starts getting thick. That's a good thing. Um, the leather, as I mentioned before, very good leather sheath made well. Um, you can sneak up and hold it that way. That's a good thing. For some people and other people might want it a different way. You just pick the knife you want. Puma has got a wide assortment of knives. Uh, you can, and I'll give you the link for the whole website so you can get whatever you want. And this is a hand custom made, well not custom made, it's a handmade knife. So there's employees. Uh, this is the IP series. That's their uh, international production. It means it was made in Spain by hand. Uh, for this German company, and that's a really good thing. I like that an awful lot. Um, the cons? Well, it's not really cons. I, I would like the blade to either come up a little bit higher or have this finger choil be a little more distinct. 
either one of those. That's more of a design feature. Sharpness Choil, I'm kind of, I love Sharpness Choils, and that's why, or a little tiny little Spanish notch in here is what I would prefer. But again, that's a design choice, not really a con. The other con is uh, the little uh, nameplate right here that says Puma IP. Uh, the wood here uh, slightly came off, and uh, but it's glued in or epoxied in, whatever, nice and flat and even. And it's really hard to tell. You have to look very carefully to see that that's just slightly off. <laughs> very, very picky for me to mention that. Uh, but you know me. If I can't find problems, I have to get nitpicky and say at least something. <laughs> it's just my style. So what do I think of this knife overall? I think it's definitely worth the asking price for it. It feels good, looks good, and it functions well. So if you're in the market for one of these, contact the guys over at Puma Knives Canada. Uh, their uh, website is down below. If you're watching on a cell phone, uh, click on the little triangle that's above this corner. There's a little black triangle just below the video right here. And if you're on a computer, then just uh, on this side, above the first comment, in capital letters it says show more click on that and you'll get to all the different links that I have for this knife and uh, everything else that I have like I've got my Facebook page and Instagram oh that reminds me I've got to update my Instagram I haven't put Instagram pictures up for a while so look at my Instagram I've got some new stuff coming up very very soon and bandit is all anxious to see me so let me tell you guys remember always cut towards your chum and not your thumb and Bandit says goodbye.